Auto making is all about progress. Who can go the fastest and farthest and safest while looking the coolest for the cheapest? Most new trends are awesome, like boosted economy cars, automatic lights, standard AC, cooled seats. But sometimes progress gives us some duds, like vinyl roofs, bubble tops, and way too many cup holders. It's up to us as the car consumers to raise our voices together and shout, we don't need paddle shifters in our minivans. Look, I know I probably sound like a cranky old man that's scared of the future, but some of these trends really grind my gears. With a new decade upon us, we're gonna look at 11 factory car trends we need to leave behind in the 2010s. Before we get into it, make sure to hit that like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what car trends bug you. Let's start with the one feature that's in basically every new car nowadays, from econo boxes to luxury SUVs. Touch screens are cool looking centerpieces for your dash. Luxury brands are pushing the boundaries though, seeing how much of the driving experience can be controlled through a single touch screen. It's usually convenient, but sometimes convenience goes too far. Porsche has automated air vents, which means instead of grabbing that little tab and adjusting it yourself in half a second, you need to navigate to the climate menu, select a specific vent, and then hack it like some sort of cyber genius. But the worst offender here is Tesla. In some newer models, you gotta use the touch screen to open the glove box. How unintuitive is that? Oh, sorry officer, my touch screen is broken and my license and registration are in the glove box. Besides, a glove box necessitates driving gloves, right? And good luck using a touch screen with your cool ass gloves on. You do have to wear fingerless gloves to use them. I wore fingerless gloves in high school. Responsible driving is a good thing, but when you start up most new cars, a message pops up on your screen asking you to obey traffic laws. Uh, yeah, no shit. This is fine, but it's super obnoxious. The worst offender is Subaru, who has a disclaimer screen that won't go away until you press agree. Way to shield yourself from liability, Subaru. I'm sure you've avoided at least two frivolous, unwinnable lawsuits. I love the driving experience. My favorite part is when I sign a legal waiver every time I start my car. Sure, the message goes away after five seconds, but that's five seconds I could have spent opening my glove box on my touchscreen. Vents cool your engine and help it breathe. There have been some extremely sweet designs to put an aesthetic spin on this necessity. For example, look at the hood scoop on the 1969 Mustang. It looks amazing. You know what's not as amazing? Vents that don't do anything. Worst offender, the Honda Civic Type R. There are no holes in these vents, which means they ventilate nothing. They're just there to give you that cool street racing aesthetic while providing a little extra drag. If your car doesn't have fake vents, but you still want to make it suck, you can buy these stick-on vents that tell the world, hey, I didn't get enough oxygen as a fetus, and now I'm denying oxygen to my car. Reverse lights were a great idea. They're a simple, automatic way for you to communicate to other drivers, hey, I'm backing up over here. Who's our worst offender? GM. On some newer Chevys, if you remote lock your car, the reverse lights come on, and they can be set to stay on for two minutes. Why do they do this? This is so pointless. Knock it off, GM. If luxury cars have proven anything, it's that people will pay more for better stuff. They've also proven that these manufacturers will push it sometimes, offering features and services for a premium when they really shouldn't cost anything at all. The worst offender here is BMW. Up until December of 2019, BMW charged $80 a year for Apple CarPlay, which is available free on pretty much every other new car. After public outcry, BMW finally stopped charging for this universally free feature, which means BMW is at least listening to people, so that's pretty good. I'll give them credit for that. But if you can't offer free things for free, I guess just make your car cost more. That's right. BMW, I demand that you make your cars more expensive. BMW subscription services don't end there though. You can get in-car Wi-Fi for $20 a month, real-time traffic information for $6 a month. You can remote start and lock your car with your phone for $20 annually. There's a concierge service for $100 a year. You can even subscribe to the car itself for as low as $1,000 a month you can get BMW Access, where a BMW is delivered to you wherever you are and whenever you want. It comes with a full tank of gas, insurance is included, maintenance is taken care of. It actually doesn't sound that bad. Right now they're running BMW Access as a pilot program in Nashville, but to be honest, I'm kind of interested to see how it shakes out. It could potentially change the way the car industry operates. Either way, I'm glad BMW stopped charging money for something that should be free. 
safety features are well intentioned, right? I love my safety, but sometimes they can be annoying, like a mom, or if you're lucky, a dad. Not everything done in the name of safety though is a great idea. For example, today most new cars will beep at you if it thinks you're doing something unsafe, which is fine, I guess, unless you're not doing a thing that's unsafe. For example, if you put something heavy enough in your passenger seat, it'll beep at you until you fasten that seatbelt. Not helpful, because that's where I keep my rocks. The worst offender here is Toyota. When their cars are in reverse, some Toyotas will do the reverse beep, like you're backing up a van, right? But the beep is only inside the car. Who are you warning, car? I know I'm going backwards. I'm pulling into my narrow ass driveway. I have to live in a cramped place because I moved to LA and make internet videos with my friends. We want a streamy. I'm following my dream. Most automakers have started messing with the standard PRND automatic shifter, introducing shifter dials or digital shifters. Like any new technology, there have been some reports of the new design being confusing, imprecise or finicky, which begs the question, why change it at all? If it ain't broke, please don't break it for no reason. If you talk about autonomous vehicles enough, you'll hear about how they're planning on integrating social media into your car and how you can communicate with friends or tweet blooper vids while your car does the driving for you. But in my opinion, until the task of driving is fully automated, social media belongs nowhere near a car. But tweet that to the worst offender, Porsche, who integrated Twitter into Porsche Connect, their onboard user interface. If you have a Porsche, everyone in your life probably already knows that you have a Porsche. That's why people get Porsches, right? They don't need to be reminded every 10 minutes, and you don't need to look at Baby Yoda memes on your touchscreen when you can just scroll through Twitter on your phone while you're driving, right? <laughs> look out for that tree! Like, like what? If police are gonna pull you over for looking at your phone, why the hell would a manufacturer put a big ass phone in your car that they're gonna make you look at? This is the dumbest shit that's on this list. I can't even believe this. My tweets, however good they are, are not worth your life. However, they are worth that follow, at Nolan J. Sykes, on Twitter and Instagram. As gas engines get more efficient, they can produce the same power with less wasted energy. This means engines are getting quieter but drivers associate noise with power. We love that rumble, right? No argument there. Car makers realize this. We have a lot of worst offenders here, BMW, Volkswagen, Ford, and others that are piping fake engine noise into the cabin. Look, I like the sound of an engine, but not like this. Gesture control might seem like a cool idea, right? You wave your arm to answer the phone, you twirl your finger up to turn up the volume, you do this, to outrun the cops, that's offensive. But it doesn't take a profit to see how this might become problematic. Worst offender, look, BMW, I know I'm saying your name a lot, but look at it like this. You're taking a lot of chances on these features. Some are good, some are gesture control. I got an idea. How about the gesture for everything is pushing a button like it already is? Dash interfaces have gotten pretty user-friendly and simple. You know what's neither of those things? Having to learn sign language to communicate with your car. I'm swiping left on that idea. Some crossovers are awesome, like the El Camino with a Subaru Brat. What makes those so awesome is that they take two extremes of the consumer car spectrum and force them together, as twisted as the people who drive them. Most people don't need a car truck, but there's a vehicle for every need. If you want something bigger than a coupe, then go with a sedan, then a station wagon, then a van, then an SUV, then a truck. That should be enough variety, damn it. The worst offender is Honda. Look at the Honda CHR, which they're calling a crossover coupe. It's an SUV, Honda. So there you have it. 11 factory trends that we need to leave behind as we flip the calendar to 2020. Hey guys, we made a show called Car Wars. It's the donut gang going against some of your favorite YouTubers like Matt Pat. I was one point away from failing my first ever driver's test. We did some crazy challenges. So as fast as I can, I wanna win. I don't wanna eat that chip, so. Loser had to eat a very spicy chip. Victory is sweet, but defeat is spicy. Is spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I had to eat it a couple times. Very spicy, very uncomfortable, but very fun to watch. So please check it out, Car Wars. It's on YouTube and Facebook right now. It was a lot of fun. Hey, I'm backing up over here. Hey, I'm backing up over here. I'm walking over here. This is what we have to deal with. Be kind. See you next time. Little pupper. Oh, little pupper. 
Go Bud Graham. Yeah. There you go.